Michael Farrell joins me to discuss the issues of homelessness in the U.S. He's the executive director of the nonprofit organization Coalition for the Homeless. Michael, this is really a complicated issue, a painful issue with really no easy answers. What is the root cause? How does someone like Lilia that we just saw in Jim Spellman's piece go from being a nanny to having depression to having other mental issues and then living on the streets of Washington? Well, certainly her story is not a unique one. Um, mental health, mental illness is certainly one of the major contributory factors to people becoming homeless, as well as primary health care issues, as well as substance abuse, uh, unemployment and underemployment uh, are all contributing factors, you know, to people uh, experiencing homelessness. What? And so that makes it. Yeah, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I interrupted you. Go ahead. Not a problem. Uh, so that is one of many reasons why it makes, you know, solving the problem so complex because of the array of issues that are impacting uh, each and every individual who experiences homelessness. Why is this such a big problem in some cities and not so much in others? I mean, I grew up in San Francisco Bay Area. It was a tremendous problem there as well. I went to Santa Monica, California a couple of weeks ago. Oh my goodness, huge problem there. I don't see it as much in Atlanta, Georgia, my hometown. And then here in Washington, I guess it depends where you are, but every day my drive to work, probably a dozen homeless people on my way, and I don't know how to help them. I don't know if I should give them money. Uh, what, what should we be doing when we see these people? How can we help and just not put a Band-Aid on the problem? First and foremost, people need to understand that each of us are no more than one, two, three, four paychecks away from being homeless ourselves. And a, a really good example of this was, you know, pr approximately four years ago, when the federal government had a shutdown, and so you had um, uh, hundreds, thousands, um, uh, if not millions, of federal workers uh, who were temporarily unemployed, and for some of those individuals, due to that unemployment, uh, they had to seek other social services, uh, which included food pantries and food banks, as well as shelter also. Uh, individuals were not able to, some individuals were not able to pay their rents or mortgages. And so it, it's really important for all of us to understand, you know, that all we need is one catastrophic event to happen in our lives and we could become homeless. So how do ordinary people like myself, what can we do to help and big cities like Washington, D.C., do they offer are there enough resources to pe help people like Lilia? She even said in the piece, you know, she goes to the shelter, spends the night, but she, it's, she's not comfortable because of potential conflict and issues with other people there. Regretfully, shelters do have a tendency to be large in terms of their capacity. And so you're looking at 50 plus individuals uh, in one particular shelter facility. And so that's not something that the average person is acc accustomed to, you know, when you consider that, you know, most people, you know, when they're living in their own homes, you know, that they're sharing that dwelling, you know, with maybe two, three, four, five, six people, not 50 to 100 or 300 people. And so that can be a very challenging situation for anyone who happens to experience homelessness. With respect to what individuals can do uh, to help, certainly supporting organizations that provide services you know, to the poor and the homeless is something that is critically needed. Uh, food banks, for example, uh, during COVID were hit really hard by the increased demand uh, for food uh, in their respective communities. And so having individuals like yourself, 
you know, to provide additional support to food banks and shelters can make a difference. And Michael, we're um, running out of time, but very quickly, what happens to these homeless uh, encampments when there are when they're cleared out, where, where do these people go? In the district, individuals are afforded the opportunity to go into the existing shelter system uh, that the district has in place. Uh, some individuals do opt not to do that. And I think it's important to note that individuals who are unsheltered, uh, living in camp, in encampments is not a new phenomenon. Unfortunately, we've had people f for years who have chosen for, for a number of reasons to sleep on the streets as opposed to going into existing shelters. And the only real difference between what we're experiencing now versus let's say 10, 20 years ago is the proliferation of tents, which makes their presence far more visible than before when there were no tents. Yeah, and I sometimes wonder where they get the tents from, but that can perhaps be a conversation for another time. Michael Farrell, thank you so much.